Thank you very much. Is Today we're going to look at uh, R of Serve. We've been looking at Serve as our framework for our mission and our vision. And uh, should we have a quick spot quiz? Because James got me in the mood now to being a spot quizzy type person. S stands for? So oh, I don't know. I'll try over here. E stands for? <laughs> My goodness. R stands for? Oh, right, okay. Just said that though, didn't I? V stands for? And E stands for? Okay. We're going to look a little bit then at R is for relationships. Now, I forgot my clicker, so Tom's going to follow me, but we're not there yet, Tom. It's interesting that um, relationships R happens in the middle of serve, and that's, that's just the way it happened. The order of these as we go through them um, doesn't mean one is prioritized over another. It's just that serve is spelt that way. Um, but there is something about relationships that becomes a fulcrum um, for us. In, to, to remain balanced, all of us need healthy relationships. We need relationships with the Lord, and we need to have his light and his love within us. But this morning, I'm not actually going to talk too much about our relationship with the Lord. Um, like all of these messages, I'm just giving a brief overview um, of an aspect of them. And then during the year, we're going to come back to each one, and we'll do like a mini-series and go a bit deeper with them. Um, so this morning... Um, what I'm going to sh share with you, um, it was quite interesting this week. I've probably struggled with this message more than any other that I've preached in a long, long time. And it's not that it's, it's a terrible subject, it's just it's so vast. Um, and actually, some of the areas I'm going to touch on today um, are going to be a bit sensitive. And so, in my usual tactful manner, I'm gently going to walk us through, and we're going to discover some things. But if I touch a raw nerve in you this morning, it's not because I'm picking on you. Please understand that. It just might be that God's starting to address something in your life. And so this morning, we're going to look at um, three aspects of relationships. And I believe that how we treat one another as a body of Christ speaks a lot um, to the world about who we are as people. And how we treat one another actually starts in, in the home. It starts in our relationships that don't even occur within this building. It starts further back than that. And so this morning, we're going to look at home relationships. Oh, oh dear. Now put up your hands if you're single. It's all right, put up your hands. It's not, you're not a leper. You're okay. All right, some of you are single. Okay. Don't you hate it when someone gets up in church and says, we're going to talk about relationships, and then they lurch into marriage? Oh, come on, you can be honest. Yes. We're not going to do that this morning. We're going to talk firstly about being single and loving it. So can we have the first slide, Tom? Come on. There we go. Being, no, there you go. Oh, yes, there we go. Sorry. You're right. I was wrong. Being single and loving it. Can I say that being single is not a disease? Some of you aren't convinced. Being single is not a disease. It's not a sin. There are many reasons why somebody could be single. They might be single because they've not yet met the one. It could be that they've been widowed. It could be that they've gone through a divorce. There are so many reasons why somebody is single in the church. And that doesn't make them a pariah in society. In fact, in 2008... Um, this came from the BBC website, um, that it was in 2008, for the first time, um, single people in the UK outnumbered those who were married. And actually, the figures run still at just under 50%. So we can actually say that 50% of the Christian body is likely to be single, not to be married. And how we treat single people and how they expect to be treated says a lot about us as a church. I really do. I think it does. Because if we're just looking at people and going, hmm, oh, there's something wrong with them. Because, you know, they haven't found the right one. And what I tend to find is that sometimes single people just look at married people and think life is perfect. <laughs> hey. I know single people that want to be married. I know married people that want to be single. Because the grass is always greener on the other side. Can I just say that um, Barbie and I have a, a really happy marriage. Uh, I'm happy. She's married. And we, 
But not everything, in, in just so you single folks know, it, it isn't just wonderful perfection and dancing through, through sort of fields of, of tulips and things. You know, one of the things that Barbie... Uh, I'm going to have to tell them now. Aren't I? One of the things that Barbie discovered when we first got married was that I have a problem with flatulence. Now... <laughs> This might put some of you off wanting to get married. Um, I had a problem with flatulence, which I knew growing up wasn't a problem for me. In fact, my brother and I would compete as we shared a room. It was fine. Um, and I thought Barbie would just want to join in in this early morning competition <laughs> with me on our first day of being married. And being a security conscious person, I was saying, we were away on honeymoon, and, and, I, and I closed all the windows, said, you can't open the windows. I mean, it's in South Africa. South Africa in Durban, it's subtropical. No, you've got to keep the windows closed. Somebody might shimmy up there and get on the balcony and attack us in the middle of the night. So at six in the morning, the usual thing happens of the Yorkshire brass band begins to emanate from my body. Um, and she's grown to love these times that I share with her. See, being, sometimes being single, we, we will look and we'll say, oh, it must be so lovely, and there are lovely times, but actually, it isn't always as simple. And I think you need to be, have a call to these things. So it's been shown that actually single people will foster and develop deeper friendships and relationships than married couples will outside of their marriage. It's been shown that the quality of friendships that single people have will be far greater than those of married couple. But being single, I think, sometimes is misunderstood. And before you'll sit there, and you probably already thought this, well, Keith, you're married, you know. I haven't always been. I have to confess. I haven't always been. In fact, I was the guy in my, in my church no one else wanted to go out with. Yeah, it was much worse than that. That's why I had to find a South African who knew nothing about me. <laughs> and marry her. But I can remember those times when everybody was pair, paired up and and anywhere you went, you just felt like the spare wheel. And any conversation that, that happened just happened around, you know, children and all this kind of thing. And you, and you kind of sit and think, oh, I've got nothing to say, you know. And then you hear things in church. I mean, I used to hear this when I was growing up. You know, Keith will do that because he has nothing else to do. Because I was the, I was the Billy No Mates. You know, no one loved me. I'm not, come on, I mean, it's worse than that. It's not that bad, but it was worse than that. You might hear these, these sort of things being said about you, and that's very frustrating. You might hear those kind of things under hush whispers, which I hope we don't hear because of the quality of our relationships here. But you might hear these things said, I wonder what's wrong with Gertrude. Yeah, she hasn't, hasn't found a man. And all that kind of stuff, all that sort of pressure is just piled on people. And can I say to married couples, can you stop it? Because it's really unfair on the single people. At the end of the day, some people are never going to marry, some are going to marry, and the Lord knows this. I want you to know that the Lord understands singleness. He was single. I want you to know that the Apostle Paul understands singleness because he was single as well. There's so much richness in Scripture. And I think we've unbalanced it slightly. Hopefully you single people are enjoying this. But I think we've unbalanced it slightly in as much that we've put the emphasis so much on church life about being married and having families that actually we're doing you a disservice. And can I apologize to single people if you felt like that in this fellowship? Because that's really not our intention. We want to love you and honor you and bless you. 